so. Just to notice the silence of your own being. Just to notice the stillness of the being that you are in truth. Just to notice how you notice the being. That it is not someone noticing the being, that the noticing of the being is in being the being, right? Being yourself, just being here. Is that obvious or is a shift in attention required? Pulling the attention of awareness back into itself, allowing the attention of awareness to rest in itself. So that the attention of awareness is not identified and creating superficial relationship with things. That the noticing of the being is in being the being. It is the confirmation in the innermost being This is the truth of who you are. This is the naturalness. And this is the beauty, is that it is entirely natural to be yourself. That we're not creating a mood or a state or a new experience. We are resting in the naturalness of being remembering the naturalness of being, remembering what is always here, who you have always been, not as a somebody, not as a character or a persona, but that you have always been timeless, open, radiant awareness, the aware being, that just simply is. And hear the silence, hear the stillness, hear the simplicity of just being. Nothing to do or to understand or to achieve. Just the simplicity of being here. So sometimes we could call this the I am presence, the presence of just being. And it might start by feeling I am is identified with the body or the sense of the person. But when we really just notice the sense of presence, the sense of simple existence, there's a an openness that is recognized, that actually this sense of I am presence is not identified with the body, that that is just a habit, that the I am presence is utterly mm, independent of body and mind that the presence itself is an alive presence that is everywhere. It's not in the body, it's everywhere. We could say it's outside of the body and in the body in its everywhere-ness. But the felt sense of presence and its everywhere-ness is really 
about the fact that it cannot be located at a particular point or place, that the felt sense of presence is alive everywhere. It's an unbounded presence, an uncontained, unlimited presence that is felt to be everywhere or felt to be nowhere or felt to be just here, but it cannot be placed and identified at a point, an objective point that the felt sense of presence is an open field of presence. And your knowing of the open field of presence is your deeper subtle knowing of yourself as the presence. You are the presence, presence to yourself, just simply being presence. There's no in-betweeny, No one else here but you being yourself. No one else here but you, consciousness, being yourself. We're not speaking to the mind and the me because quite simply it does not exist in reality. The mind and the me is a creation in the limited patterns of consciousness. So what you might think of as me and my life and my mind and my body, it is all consciousness. And the sense of me and my life is where the consciousness is moving in limited patterns and believing itself to be contained at a singular point but in this moment we surrender the singular point to the infinite field of openness that the felt sense of being everywhere nowhere just here of being the unbounded silence of being is the immediate surrender of identification at a singular point into the recognition that what you are in truth is a whole wide open awake field of presence, infinite, unbounded. And so in your infinite unboundedness as the field, the one field, this field includes the point that you have felt to be the person, but it is remembering that the sense of separation and division and limitation is not the reality, that the reality is that you are unbounded, that you're not the person, you're not the story, and the Knowing of this is the direct experience here now in the awake being, in the awake field of consciousness, where consciousness itself is consciously awake and aware of itself here now. So here you can be aware of the person, be aware of the mind, the story, the roles that you play can be aware of it all and feel that you are in truth independent and not defined by any of that that you are aware of. You can feel that as awareness you are independent of anything, that you are no thing and in truth the felt sense of being yourself here is of being emptiness of being openness, that we're not looking to achieve anything or get anywhere. We're just opening to this moment as it is without the assumption that you are limited, 
You live in assumption that you are limited at the point of the me and the mind. So we are opening up the assumption to the possibility of discovery in the direct experience and confirmation in the innermost being that there's been a misunderstanding and that consciousness is not limited in any way at any point. Consciousness is not limited at the point of anyone, anywhere. No one is ever limited at a singular point, nor have they ever been. And so this invitation consciousness in this moment is to remember that quite simply, consciousness in its nature is not limited, restricted, confined in any way. That consciousness in its nature, its natural essence is always unlimited and free. And this is about you consciousness, remembering that you're not limited, that you are not restrained and held at the point of a body mind, that you consciousness are unlimited and free and you have always been. That there has been a confusion, a misunderstanding, a learned habit to identify at a singular point and forget your freedom while all the while longing for your freedom. Forgetting the love and the truth of who you are while all the while longing to remember and live as the love and truth of who you are. But you have never been limited. That has just been a pattern in the flow of consciousness that has kept consciousness moving in a small, limited pattern but the pattern is absolutely one with all that is. And here it's just to remember the spaciousness, the openness, and start to flow in the remembering of your true essence nature, wide, open, empty, not to identify with the content, not to move in assumption, and habit, but to open to the fullness of your radiant true self, to remember the naturalness, the relaxation and openness of being yourself. This is not instruction for the person, for the mind. This is not anything that the mind can follow, even though the mind might imagine that it can. This is consciousness speaking to itself. This is reality. This is the invitation to remember the reality of who you are. Right here now, in the stillness, the unmoving presence, in the silence of being, to remember that you are not bound. You are not a story. You are not a me. That you are unlimited freedom. You are silence. You are stillness. You are the simple being, just being itself. The one being that is shared by all seeming beings is the essence nature of being. Now in the flow of consciousness, there are these flowing laws of nature that dance and appear uniquely, but there's never any division, never any division. And to know your oneness with all that is, 
is to remember the freedom and flow and truth of who you are, to let go of everything that has been learned and held as a conceptual context and open to the wide, expansive, infinite freedom, the eternal, timeless, that you are not limited by time and space. So we could say touch time, touch space in the here. In the here you touch space, but you make no superficial relationship with space. You just recognize the here-ness. And in the now, you touch time in presence, as presence, and you do not make a superficial relationship with time. You recognize in truth, there is only now, in presence, here, now, only here, now. You have never known anything other than being here, now. This has been the constant, unmoving truth underneath the movie of me and my life that we cannot make an explanation to the mind that is understandable, that can qualify, conceptualize, and contextualize all of the way that creation appears and feels so real as me and my life. We can only come to the wider perspective, the true perspective, and see clearly that there has been a misunderstanding, to see clearly who you are in truth, is what brings freedom from the misunderstanding. We cannot use the mind to move within limited patterns and find the unlimited. We can only come to recognize the unlimited, be the unlimited, and then see the limitation and realize, oh, what I am is not limited. What I am is not finite. What I am is utterly free. And yes, there is a point in this opening, in the flow of being consciousness, that we do recognize that in total wholeness, we are the infinite and we include the finite. We are the unlimited and we include what feels to be limited. But we can only know this all-inclusive truth once we know the wideness and freedom of true nature. Otherwise, we will be trying to scramble in conceptual and intellectual understanding, and it will always feel limited. It will always feel like I'm not quite getting it. I don't feel the freedom, the love, the glory, because in limitation, you cannot feel the freedom, the love, the glory, because limitation is a small pattern that is included in the freedom, the love, the glory, but you have to know yourself as the freedom, the love, the glory, in order to recognize how the one that you have felt yourself to be in division is fully included in the wholeness, as is everything, everyone, your whole imagined projected world and life is completely included and it does not disappear in the way that the mind might imagine. It's just the shift in perspective sees it completely differently and knows it from a deeper, clearer perspective that does not separate and protect and defend it sees its own wholeness and knows its oneness. You know your oneness with all that is. But as we open here now to the wide open expansiveness of true nature, true essence nature, and the remembering of what the I am presence really is, and that it is not a body-mind, that it is not a thing, that it is the 
wide open freedom of being yourself, just being here as you are, just as you are, not trying to get anywhere. We're not trying to push away the body mind. We're just in a deeper felt sense of presence that includes the body mind, but is not limited with identification at the point of the body mind. We're in this open awakeness of consciousness, conscious of itself, being everywhere, being wide and free, clear and open, silent, still. We are recognizing the stop, the stop is the stop of playing the role, the stop of the mind consciousness, as there is an open recognition of the largeness, the vastness of your being. It's that consciousness starts to rest in its own beingness and the mind consciousness starts to quieten and relax. So you can be here, aware of thinking, aware of what we would call the mind, aware of the body and this point that we might call the person, aware of it all, and yet you can feel in the wide open expansive being, in the stop, in the stillness, a certain freedom from that sense of containment. You start to feel yourself unlimited, bigger than the mind and the body, and yet including the mind and the body, bigger, wider, vaster, that you are everywhere. You cannot find yourself in limitation. You can see everything but your, the felt sense of what you are and where you are is everywhere. This is the infinite unboundedness that you can feel this aliveness of your everywhereness, that you explode out of the sense of containment. You explode out of the sense of being stuck in the skin and bones and flesh you're not stuck in the head and the brain. You're not limited in any way. And you start to feel yourself as this unlimited being. You can be aware of the person, the body, the mind, the story. You can be aware of it all and recognize that as the awareness of it all, you are not limited or bound by any of it. You are completely free of the me. You're free of the story. You're free of the narrative. You're free of the past and the future. You're free of memory. It is just to feel who are you in this moment without a single thought? Who are you in truth? In this moment, here now, without a thought, without thinking yourself into being someone, who are you? What are you? You can feel yourself here, can feel your own presence, but without a thought, what actually are you in truth? What is this sense of self? that you can recognize, this sense of self that is so familiar? What is this sense of self without the overlay of a mental story and a mental projection of a movie? Who are you without a thought, without a story, without a narrative? Who are you without a past, without a future? Who are you in truth? What are you in truth? When you just meet yourself, 
the felt sense of yourself that's so familiar, just to feel yourself, just as you have always been, underneath the story, underneath this overlay of story, when you don't identify with the story and this foggy Maya, this sticky overlay, if you don't identify with any of it, can you feel the freedom and the spaciousness and the extraordinary stillness and peace of who you are in truth? That you are not the thoughts, you are not the roles that you play, you are not your job, your story, your narrative, you're none of that. You are absolutely alone in truth. And the true aloneness is the oneness, that you are all one, that you are one with all that is. And so in the aloneness, you find a kind of solitude and simplicity because you're not the one with a story of loneliness. You're not the one with a story of not belonging. You're not the one with a story of unworthiness, unlovableness. You're not the one with the story of being separate and divided from the whole. You are one with the whole. You are one with all that is. And in the felt sense of just simply being, when you're not identified with a single thought, you can feel the truth, indirect experience of yourself as freedom, as unlimited, as not being a character in a movie, that you have no story, you have no movie, you have no narrative, you have nothing behind you, nothing in front of you, because you are timeless, eternal being here now. And this is all there is. And so in the total and utter aloneness, the sanctuary of silent being, the glory is that you join in absolute oneness with all that is. So you're never lonely or in a sense of not belonging anymore, because you are one in the heart, in the essence, with all that is, with everybody. And this is where the love explodes in the heart, because you're not restricted and confined and protected and holding yourself in separation. The love explodes in a wide open infinite heart that knows the oneness with all that is. You have never been more intimate with your friends and family, your companions. You have never been more intimate with your imagined enemies, right? You have never been more intimate with all that is until you are intimate with your own true nature, until you enter your own heart, naked, undone, revealed until you enter yourself in truth, until you enter the openness and reality of your wide, vast, radiant heart. You don't know intimacy or love until you enter the fullness of your expansive nature, until you enter the emptiness and true utter aloneness. You do not find fullness how curious, what a paradox to the mind to find an emptiness, an aloneness of content, concept, ideas and beliefs, and yet to find the most extraordinary fullness, wholeness and intimacy where the heart is exploding with love, with wildness, with untamed freedom because this is your true nature. Your true nature consciousness is to flow in wild, 
untamed abandon because you're not limited by anything not by any condition not by any story there's nothing to conform to there's no rules here you are utterly free to be yourself and my goodness what a relaxation what a celebration right it's like letting your clothes drop letting the whole costume drop letting your tied upness drop let it all go be yourself be wild and free and feel the flow brushing against any sense of edge or limitation freeing it's like riding a wild horse naked unabandoned and just feeling like there's nothing to stop you you've got no control right you've got no control in any way and it's just to let go and just be carried be carried and feel your oneness with nature with the elements with all of the elemental powers right feel your oneness right that you're not restricted contained you're not imbalanced and lopsided flawed and imperfect you are one with it all and when you are one with it all your heart is exploding in a sense of openness that is true love your heart is exploding out of protection and a felt sense of being one with all that is because you are one with yourself one with your whole self your uncontained self you are one with the true being that you are just being here just as you are without the thoughts and imaginings of who you are without your story without your imagined past and your dreamy future just to be so fully here now that you are unplugged revealed right uncontained untamed just here that true integrity is not a set of rules that keeps you in a certain set of habitual behaviors playing it safe that true integrity is to know your own wholeness and to live this truth in absolute radiant openness in the face of a collective consciousness that is still bound it's to be a way shower to be a light a luminous radiant emanation of wild open love and so you can live this truth in utter freedom and stay in the remembrance in in allegiance <laughs> in total collaboration with your true nature and that you don't need to keep collaborating and playing out the story of me that you can live here in total freedom in reality you don't have to pop back in to the movie in order to live this life that is just an imagination of the mind life is living itself it's living itself right now wild and free and in the openness of the field of pure flowing consciousness you can feel the flow of life true vitality true life true radiance true heart true self true being luminous radiant wide open freedom this is the truth of who you are you do not need to know how to live this how to relate from here you do not need to know how to deal with anything it's just to be here and watch how life already knows right that you're not the one that you thought you were you're not the one that is limited and held within a story 
held captive by fear and anxiety and imaginings of a world that is destroying itself. You're not held captive by that story. That story is being created by a collective consciousness that imagines there is separation and is living in ignorance of itself. That collective consciousness that is living in this way is called humanity and it is living in a collective misunderstanding of limitation where there is imbalance imbalance and the power is absolutely in imbalance because really there's an innocence to it all that there's a scrambling and an idea that if I get more power and I exert more power then I will feel good about myself but no one in the collective misunderstanding the collective mind will ever feel good about anything until freedom from the collective misunderstanding and belief in separation is seen through. And the way that this happens is that as the consciousness of each being ripens and opens to be this and live this, it reverberates and supports the whole so to live this is the greatest service to humanity. To live this awakeness, this freedom, this truth, wild, not conforming and creating allegiance with the story of misery. It is to live in absolute allegiance with the light, with the victorious glory of the wide open reality and not to keep identifying but to still be life living itself, but in freedom as the light, as the love that can illuminate just in your lived experience. You don't have to shout from the rooftops. You don't have to tell anyone anything. You just have to live it in order to be the force, the force for change, for truth, to support the whole is to stop collaborating with the story of misery and stop believing that what you see in your projected worldview is true. It is to recognize that when you watch the news and read the newspapers that you are collaborating, your mind is looking for ways to keep the play of separation alive. Now, it's okay to know what's happening in the collective consciousness, but in order to be free of it, you have to be able to take complete responsibility for what your view is and how you're seeing it and how you're affected. Because if we don't take responsibility for our own view, then we are playing into the collective story of victimhood that this is happening to me this is happening to others that there are victims we have to come to free ourselves from our own sense of victimhood in order to see from a clear perspective that what we are seeing we are creating that we are moving in a flow of creation in a sense of separation we're creating and collaborating with a flow of creation that is creating a humanity that is held in its own beliefs and imbalance. And so there's this way to free humanity from its imbalance, and it's to not collaborate with the story of separation. It's to live free from the mind, the collective mind, to to free yourself from your own mind and to unentangle yourself from the collective mind so that you are not collaborating with separation. You're not collaborating with these stories. You know, there can be these ideas in the collective mind of conspiracy, but most of the conspiracy theories, we could say, 
are collaborating with separation. The conspiracy is the collective mind, the whole mind complex, which is separation, is the conspiracy, right? And as long as we are collaborating with the conspiracy, we are basically in a sense of, of, of separation. And we're, we're getting these flavors within the story of, oh, yeah, that feels true. That feels true. And we're feeling a resonance of a certain truth, but we're interpreting it through the mind that then goes into fear. And as soon as we're in fear, we're in collaboration with separation because fear is separation, right? We have to come to the fearless being, which is free from mind, right? So that we can collaborate with the light, collaborate and live in constant celebration and victory, right? We live in the, in the Jai Ma, victory to the divine light. We live in a victory that knows in absolute certitude that wholeness is whole and this wholeness will be known by all beings. It has to be because it's the innate nature of all beings right now. And the only reason that there's a conspiracy and a misunderstanding and a great imbalance in the collective mind is because of the ignorance, right? We're using these words that get used in the ancient mm, primordial teachings, perennial teachings, we could say, that the ignorance is the ignoring of true nature. And the collective mind is in, is held captive by its own ignorance. Its own ignorance is what creates fear and misery and all of these craziness that we see within the collective mind. Let's say within the collective, we see what happens when the belief in separation is played out to extreme. We see the atrocities of, of what mm, creation looks like in imbalance. And so the way out of this is not through identification within it and going into the fear and the stress and the upset. It's to meet our own fear and stress and upset, to let our heart, our sense of individual heart be widened wrenched open by what we see, wrenched open by the feelings that come up. It's, it's part of the mechanism of intelligence of how it cracks the heart that is ready to open, open, to take 100% responsibility for what you are experiencing, right? To take 100% responsibility for what you are experiencing is to be here now in presence and to be able to say the feeling here is anger, sadness, stress, fear, rage, terror. It's the 100% responsibility is to say what's happening here now is this and to stay so present with what's happening without collaborating with the story that's like the propaganda, right? It's the, it's the collective mind's propaganda. Oh my God, look at all of this. This is terrible. We've got to try to change the world, but we can't change the world because world peace is not in the projected world of the mind. World peace is in freedom from the mind, right? World peace is freedom from a mind that imagines a projected world is reality. World peace is to know reality is always peaceful and is never ever affected by the movie show of the projected world that we see through the whole movie 
of the world. We see through the collective dream. We see through the dream even of humanity, right? So this is freedom where we actually have an impact that serves humanity, serves the whole, because we're not collaborating with the, oh my God, right? We're not collaborating with the story. We're living this truth. We're living in freedom. And it's a wild thing for a mind to absolutely not be able to understand that it's possible to be living in a way in a completely other realm, in a different reality from what the mind imagines is my reality. That there's a reality where none of that stuff is happening in the way that the mind thinks it is. And yet from here, we can see what the collective mind's movie is. We can see it and we can feel it and we're working to transmute that, but we're working to transmute it by feeling what happens, right? What happens when we see things like war and torture and abuse of, of in any way, right? What happens? And our responsibility is to, is to recognize what happens in your inner functioning, right? Because if these things are appearing in your movie and you're entering into ways to see it and explore it, then it's because there's something in you that needs to be awakened and freed through the seeing of these things. The reason that you would even look at the news or, or read or you know, start Googling or watching videos or however this information comes to you is because there's something in the consciousness that is making those movements happen so that you get to have the experience that you have, right? When there's freedom from that, you just don't engage in any of that stuff. And if you do see it, you are, let's say there's compassion, but there's no sense of, of, of anything wrong, which could seem crazy to the mind. There's an understanding of why it feels like it's wrong. But the deeper knowing is this, what's wrong, what's wrong <laughs> is the collective mind's misunderstanding and what it brings is a feeling of, wake up, wake up, see the truth, see who you are, right? See your true nature and free yourself. And it brings more passion, <laughs> more aliveness to share the view of reality, to wake up every being out of the dream of separation in order that the vision of suffering can be seen through, right? On every, every, every level. And so there's the ability to see it, but just not to buy into it at all. Because the knowing refines that to buy into it is to collaborate and to stay completely free of it and to just keep beholding the truth, right? To keep shining the radiant truth and to know only God, only God, only God, only the self, only the self, only the self. And to keep the pointing that says, find yourself, find God, find the glory. Do not find any answers in a limited context, find the only true answer, which is your true nature, and then everything will be answered. Every question will be answered. When you know yourself as the living answer, you'll understand 
why creation looks like a crazy, a crazy whatever it looks like, right? Because your view is your unique view, right? You're looking out of a unique window. You're creating, let's say the flow of life moves through the filters of the consciousness that you think yourself to be as a character. But what you are in truth is, is one open consciousness. But at the point, at the point, there are laws of nature. And at the point, it's like the point has an assignment to free itself from the collective. And we have to go through the process, we could say, of freeing the felt sense of being a somebody that's divided. We have to go through the process of freeing the point to know the infinite, then continue to free the residues at the point. But we also still remain in a certain recognition of the point in order to be of service in the realm of humanity, right? So this is what's happening. This is what is happening. And it all starts in the stillness, in the silence. And that's why we have to appear as radical and crazy and not conforming and saying things that the mind doesn't understand and sometimes won't like because we have to shine the light in order to show the way. The way is into yourself, right? It's not to join anyone in the, in the play of humanity. It's not to, it's not to join <laughs> in any way in the story. It's to join in the heart, to join in the oneness, right? Where the joining is the gaze that says, this is the truth, here we meet, and yes, and in a way, this is what we speak of as the pillowcases, right? That we're living in this truth, and we're gazing upon each other, and we can see the uniqueness, and we can feel the collective, but we're gazing, and we see, okay, you look like a male body, a female body, you look like you have this color hair, these color eyes, you look like this collective bundle of laws of nature that play in this way but all i see is myself all i see is light and i bow to the light that you are i bow to the light that we are the one it's living here in this place that sees only yourself only god only the knowing of what is true and doesn't say yeah i know isn't it terrible right? What are we going to do about the world that we meet in this place that just loves and shines and we help each other in companionship to clear the residues. And so the depth of our meeting in truth gets more and more radiant and enlivened, that we support the fact that we can feel like, oh, I got, I got lost in the movie there. Or I'm stuck in the movie and I need some help and a clear reflection so that I can come to the true perspective. But in a way, that's why our gathering, it's like it appears and it feels like it's in the world. And in a way, it's in the world, but it's not of the world, right? That this is where we can be living in a kind of what might get called like a utopian freedom, right? It doesn't really matter what it looks like on the surface. It's all about where you're living inside, where you're living in truth, right? And minds would say, can say whatever they want about it. It doesn't matter. You can be here or you cannot be here. It doesn't matter right? It's about living this truth, living this, feeling the, the wildness of true love, 
oneness with all. And so as we are speaking of being this love and feeling this love through starting to feel the true nature as openness, right? You see, whenever we start to speak of this and we open the openness, we, we end up expressing the totality, <laughs> right? Because it's like we open up, we could say the Pandora's box or the hole that Alice falls down into Wonderland, right? On the surface of life, there are all of these ways that stories and myths have been pointing us our whole life, right? Through the wardrobe into Narnia, right? Star Wars, right? <laughs> the, the battle to, for the light to win over darkness, right? All, I mean, so many of these worldly stories are pointing us to this truth and resonate <laughs> to bring it to bring an aliveness where we feel like we want to be the hero or heroine in that story we want to be the one that saves everyone right but the truth is that we can't save anyone in the story you can't save anyone until you save yourself from the great misunderstanding. And then you see through the whole story, the whole misunderstanding. And then you just rest here in the truth of who you are. Being the love, being the light and continuing to refine and refine. And in that supporting the whole right? That we're not trying to create world peace in the movie because it's not possible because the movie is creation and creation curiously is a flow. It's the polarized flow away, right? Victimization creation is a flow away from the divine flow. And it has to learn to flow in accord with divinity to know its true nature, right? Only when we come to the flow of divine attraction and the flow of life, the flow of surrender, which is all the flow into the remembering of divine wholeness, once we enter this flow in our knowing, we're being carried. We're being carried by the naturalness and the truth of who we are, right? We're being carried. <laughs> so we don't have to do anything. You see, that's why there's such a, a difference in the feeling of being like the hero of the world, being the one that wants to save the world, that there's a doer, there's a character, there's a me. There's a me that wants to be seen. There's a me that wants to feel good about themselves. There's a me that wants to get something. The, a me that wants to belong and join. Yeah, let's talk about all this terrible stuff and become friends in the terribleness, right? It's like a, it's like a, a pull to collaborate. But you know, what really starts to happen is that when we're not collaborating in fear, when we start collaborating in love within the play, we start meeting in, in a depth of love, which is a surrendered love, right? You see this in uh, situa like terrible situations where everything is stripped, right? War, mm, hurricanes or in natural disasters, where everything is stripped where all of the ability to kind of orient in separation is stripped. People come together in love, not fear. And coming together in love is what starts to bring a flow of knowing the true nature. It starts to pull beings 
the consciousness of beings into the flow of attraction, into the flow of surrender. So, you know, this is why when we see these disasters, that we have to not be an observer that's sitting there watching TV saying, oh my God, it's terrible. Because all that's happening is that we're projecting ourselves into a situation and imagining how we would feel if we were in that situation, right? So let it rip your heart open. Let compassion be the nectar that, that purifies your own heart. But don't imagine yourself into a situation and take on an idea of other people's suffering because the beings, the consciousness of the beings that are in these situations are being moved to sh be shaken and waken, waken up, right? They're being, they're being awoken through their situations in ways that the mind can't understand. So we have to let every being live their life and trust the divine knows exactly how to touch every consciousness and shake it awake. And whether it puts that consciousness in an appearance of war or a disaster or abuse or whatever to our human mind seems like, oh my God. And that's why we have to say, yes, oh my God, show me who I am. Show me where I am one with you. Oh my God, my glorious one, show me, show me where there's only you and how all of this that troubles my heart is you. Show me how this is love. Show me how this is you. And that's why our journey to know this is not to collaborate with imagining what someone else is going through and project our feelings away, but to feel our own feelings and stop projecting ourselves into an imagined world, but actually be here now, feel our feelings, meet yourself, meet the vastness of yourself, know yourself, find all the answers in yourself and journey into the depths of what is the root, essence, nature of humanity, right? Find out what is humanity underneath its appearance of craziness and power imbalance and how it tortures itself, how one person could torture, abuse, hurt another in any way is because of ignorance. And so we have to, in a way, heal our own ignorance in order to support the possibility of all ignorance, right? You know, yesterday we spoke about how we see the mind as a child and we have to hold the child of our own mind while it releases. Now, every mind in the collective, every being that you see, is that child that needs holding, but you can't hold that child through the story. You hold that child, even of the beings that look like evildoers. Every being is the same glory in its essence, right? Whatever the character that's being played. So it's like you have to hold the child of your own mind while it off gases all of its trauma and while it lets go and surfaces all of its stresses. While the loving of yourself and your own seemingly human flaws is what loves the flaws in every being, no matter what character they are playing out because we come to recognize that it's a divine orchestration and every player in the play whatever they look like whatever their role 
when they take off their mask of separation, what you find is the same light, the same God, the same one, the same glory. Underneath the mask, underneath the costume, underneath the pain, we find the same, the same glory that is orchestrating it all, animating it all, and that the only way out of it is to come to know yourself. And to come to know yourself is what supports the imagining, the imaginary, let's say, mm, craziness. It supports your family, your friends, your loved ones, your enemies, <laughs> the beings that you'll never meet, you know, in the Amazonian rainforest, <laughs> You know, all, everyone everywhere is supported by you knowing the truth of who you are. And as these words come, it's not to even try to understand it with the mind, but to feel where there's a resonance of recognition, a resonance of truth because this is where you already know yourself and you already know the wisdom and intelligence of reality. This is where you are already free. You don't have to work for freedom. You just have to find where you can feel the resonance of already being free and here resonate as freedom live as freedom, and then move in the life as the frequency. Even when you're getting stuck and still working things through, know the truth, resonate as truth, resonate as love, as true happiness, and be the light for all beings to know this freedom. Be the love that loves every being unconditionally, that you love even the characters in the collective play that seem like the bad ones. They are, they, that is consciousness. We could say it's soul that are in sacrifice. They're living a life of sacrificing to play an evildoer, a wrongdoer, a big fat meanie, whatever we want to call it. Any being that is playing a character that is challenging is in a life of sacrifice so that they meet themselves and have that experience, but so that they affect the beings in exactly the way that they affect them. There are no mistakes. And as we go through this refinement process, we come to know that within our own life by refining and freeing ourselves from the constraint of our own story, our own story and traumas and upsets, we come to recognize that there's only been God playing God in everything that has ever happened. Every character has been the same one. And we, we clear the story of the past we clear the story of my life and so that we can live in the knowing of innocence where there's no trauma or upset or attachment to shadowy murkiness because we work through it all, we clear it all and so that we can truly be this light, this love that says there's no one, nothing in this life that I have a problem with, right? There is no bad characters, no evil doers, that there's only oneness with every single seeming perpetrator. And when we come to a oneness with the whole idea of victim perpetrator, we free ourselves from separation and we come to live as the love and not as the victim and not as the perpetrator, right? We play both sides when we're in separation to somebody somewhere, whether you are playing out an, a seeming evildoer 
we could say, as a, as a murderer, or whether you have ever killed a fly, an ant, or a mosquito, it's all the same, right? It's all the same. We're the victim, we're the perpetrator in separation. It's to recognize that, but that in the truth, we are one, and the one is love. And the love is here, right now, in the silence, in the stillness, in the wide openness of the heart. There is a knowing of this truth. There's a knowing of the truth of who you are. And to open to this truth, to this freedom, is to open in service, surrender, allegiance, with the light, with your own wholeness. It's to find your own resonance of wholeness and to be this for yourself as you free yourself from the residues and stresses. And really that's, you know, the supportive nature of our gathering and, and Sangha is that we're supporting each other to go through the flow of life, living in allegiance, living in this truth, to know the freedom, but to support ourselves in the human experience, in companionship, to be able to meet the residues and stresses in order to free them, to come to the, the greatest possible depth of freedom in this lifetime that we can come to. We might not go all the way through, but we can know the truth to a depth that we know that when the body drops, that we're just taking off a costume, right? That we're graduating. <laughs> and that we're, in a way, in our graduation, the, the dropping of a body can be a letting go into God and not a letting go into fear, right? Even this in itself is an extraordinary uh, remembrance to happen in a human life. If we can die well in our human life, if we can die into God, if we can die into love, when the body drops, that in itself, if we can let go into a peacefulness, like a celebration, like a graduation, even this is an extraordinary, extraordinary remembrance in this human life to attain peace, right? To attain peace. What happens is we just keep realizing that the peace that we know that we are as the being, it just keeps getting finer. <laughs> it just gets finer, just gets finer. But any peace, any peace is a lot of peace. <laughs> You are the peace. You're not someone experiencing peace because the ego is relaxed. You are the peace. To know the peace, the sanctuary of the unmoving in the stillness, in the silence. To know the reality, to touch reality and to let the lived experience be an absolute yes to the possibility of realization all the way through, right? This is what a human life is for. This is the purpose of the human life. And this is, you know, when we're looking for our purpose, we're often looking as a me to find the right sense of belonging. But when we find our true purpose, that the purpose of a human life is to move through the residues to know yourself and to free 
the residues of the me into self-realization. It is to find a purpose that does not have anything to do with the me. It's the universal purpose. And so we find our belonging. We find a sense of alignment, a sense of knowing that what, however the life is playing out and however our laws of nature are moving, that our deepest knowing is that everything is rooted in knowing the truth and living this truth as deeply as possible and realizing the, the oneness with God, with the glory, with divine wholeness all the way through, right? So it brings a sense of, of belonging, of, of aliveness, where we don't have to decide, should I do this or should I do that? That whenever any seeming crossroads arises, we orient to whatever orients us to support the deepest longing. We just are constantly orienting to be in the yes to God, yes to the glory, whatever God wants, whatever thy will is, just yes, 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 right? That we're constantly, in a way, if we're seemingly choosing, which in truth, of course, we're not, but if we feel like we're choosing, we play out being the chooser and have fun doing it. Um, I think I'll choose the glory. <laughs> um, yep, I think I'll go with the yes to the glory of God this time, right? <laughs> and it doesn't matter. Some choices are, you know, much smaller and irrelevant. They don't, they don't matter. But where we feel like, I don't know which way to go, what supports, what supports your deepest longing to know yourself for freedom, what supports that? Choose that. Don't try to work out the whys or the hows. Choose that and see how the miraculous support comes in to give you everything that you need to, to support your yes to, to freedom. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so we live in the being in the stillness in the in this holy yes right wherever we are in the unfolding wherever we are it doesn't matter it's the same it's the holy yes whether you're just feeling like you're still in separation and you're starting to feel the being you're not ever in separation. That's the illusion. That's the delusion of the mind. So immediately, wherever there's a, a spark of recognition of truth, it's to make an allegiance with the spark of divine and say, yes, the holy yes. And as we open, it's a constant that we open in deeper surrender. We're always just saying yes. Yes, yes to truth, yes to truth. And we just deepen and deepen until we start to recognize I'm living in celebration. This is what Jai Ma is. This is what the great Jai is. It's the great celebration. This is what we can live in, where it was spoken as this constant beholding. We live in constant holy yes, submission, celebration, Yes, yes, yes. To live this, to live this. And just to know that if anything comes into the field that feels discordant, that we meet it, we face it. We say yes to this too. Yes to that, the yes to this is thy will. So we just rest here in the seat of truth and we watch the movie. We say yes to everything, to receive it, to transmute it, to meet it to release the stresses from the nervous system and all of it is in utter service to the whole. And as we <laughs> move through the surrender, the reflection of life 
gets sweeter. It gets sweeter. Because we're taking in the sweetness of the nectar of bliss, of our own bliss of being. Every time we say yes and we get wider, we take a little sip of blissful nectar and we say yes and we get wider. We take a little sip. We say yes and we get wider and wider until we recognize that there are no edges. There are, is no width, height, depth, breadth. <laughs> that there's this infinite, uncontained nature that we are, always here now. No past, no future, just this. And what is this? This is a glorious celebration. This is a radiant, luminous wholeness, and it's all there is. So every sip, every spark, every aliveness of the longing of the heart, is a saying yes, a saying yes, a saying yes to the true purpose of this glorious human life. And then you see the human life is lived as a divine life, right? Where, you know, this is where we can't give expression or words to what does that mean for humanity? What does that, we just, we just don't go into that as a narrative. We just live this human life, human experience right now, right this, right? This is a human experience, but it's utterly divine, utterly divine. It's not a mental concept of needing to explain, well, how is, is this human? Is this humanity? Is this? It just doesn't matter because the presence of now doesn't need to explain anything. But yes, we can say it's a human life. It's an embodied life. It seems like that. <laughs> I still have to say that it just seems like that because the true knowing is a perspective that is, is completely free of this, that, that could drop the costume in any moment and it wouldn't matter because the wholeness is whole before this, right? It's not dependent upon this. The wholeness is whole. It is an eternal life. And yet right now, the eternal life is expressing like this, beaming itself in <laughs> somehow, <laughs> right? So this is just about living as you are, where you are, be yourself. And that's why the way is to be yourself and to keep turning your gaze to yourself, gaze upon yourself, gaze upon your true self, gaze upon the spark of divinity, the spark of knowing, gaze upon your longing, just the ache in your heart to know this truth, gaze upon where you know there is an opening, an openness, gaze upon your divine nature, and just keep aligned, only this, only this, only this. And it doesn't matter if you have words like mantra or a, the name, the nama of, of, of the glory, whether you, whether you call that God or the mother, or whether you love Krishna or Shiva, or, <laughs> you know, we won't start to reel off all the possibilities. It doesn't matter if you're, if you, whatever, if there's a name, a nama that's coming because the name is God, right? Every name is God. The name, the one, the nama, right? So it's to, it doesn't matter if there's something that resonates, that brings an aliveness. Keep repeating it because at some point you just fall into it. You just keep the gaze fixed whether it's just a yes, a yes, 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 here now, here now, being here, being the being, being the being, resting in the glory, this, 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 whatever it is, it's just to stay, right? This is why, you know, the practice of japa 
gets given as a, as a spiritual practice because japa it's like a it's like a, a little path right it's like with all of these practices they're paths that bring us to the possibility of opening they bring us to the stop the presence where we are clear enough from the busyness of mind but essentially it's to just keep this fixed yes to truth utter devotion to this truth to know this truth to know yourself as this truth not as a teaching a lineage or anything like that all of those come after <laughs> right so we have to come before we use the vehicles that we're given we do use the vehicles the teachings the lineages all of that whatever resonates is beautiful but we have to follow it as a vehicle not get stuck in it and come to know yourself as the truth you find yourself in yourself right this is the beauty you are the beauty. Mm. Yeah.